photography played an important role in Europe's colonization of Africa and Asia, and in helping to further cement the ideological basis for European white racial superiority. After Europe colonized Africa in the late 19th century, photographers traveled widely, hired by colonial regimes to produce images. Alongside their military might, the colonizers brought with them both missionaries and scientists, the former to save and the latter to study colonized peoples. The invention of photography helped to further this aim, particularly with the cataloging of human beings. And thus, encyclopedias filled with ethnographic types were born, nameless representatives of their ethnicities whose names we'll never know. These images, used for anthropological purposes, resulted in the dehumanization of the subject, denying him or her power and agency. The use of a number board to identify the photographic plate and individual only intensified this further. These photos directly contributed to a discourse of white racial superiority. They were used as evidence supporting race theories of the time, whereby facial features, including the size of an individual's skull, were thought to relate to intellectual ability. This photo is captioned, maybe someone who has some authority or has some influence. She looks as though she's somebody important. The myth of Africa as the dark continent was already well established in Europe by this point. It was further cemented through photography, allowing existing stereotypes to be represented visually. If we look at a broad spectrum of colonial photographs produced in Africa as well as Asia, a visual vocabulary emerges. The contrast between light, civilised, and dark, uncivilised, was often emphasised. This light was shown by contrasting skin colour and by emphasising power dynamics through dress and pose. Here, Belgian colonial administrators take centre stage, the white of their clothing juxtaposed against the black of the tribe who make up the backdrop of the photo. Meanwhile, the chief is placed awkwardly to the left of the frame, acknowledging his status above the other individuals of his race, while simultaneously placing him below the white colonists in hierarchy. At a sewing class in the Mission of the Daughters of Charity in the Belgian Congo, the position of the white women, again dressed in white, with their hands placed on the shoulders of those seated, emphasises their dominant status over the young women. Their manner is parental, infantilizing those seated, the white saviour trope captured on camera. This contrast between white and black is a recurring theme in photographs that include both coloniser and the colonised. Here, a group of young children, now saved, don white clothing. This visual vocabulary that speaks of power and superiority through dress, pose and colour is repeated over and over again in colonial photography. Studio photographers in particular created an image of Africa and Asia that ultimately served the ideological needs of the colonial powers. Photographic archives were created documenting people, professions, costumes and custom. This was especially done through the use of artificial backdrops, costume and props. Even photos outside of studio settings were often carefully crafted to show a particular view of colonised lands and peoples in their natural environment. Subjects are often shown partaking in primitive activities, often featuring erotic and pornographic content. The photos gratified colonial desire with an imagery that was actively used in colonial propaganda campaigns to lure European men to the colonies for work. As many have pointed out, this photography, in which subjects had no say as to how they were represented, helped to shape Europe's idea about Africa and other colonised lands. The images were often published in European newspapers and even as postcards that were distributed widely. And thus, the camera was used as a tool that helped to cement the ideological basis for European or white superiority and the subjugation of black and brown colonised peoples as inferior, thereby justifying Europe's colonial project in Africa and Asia.